Jenny, you come to Asia at a very interesting time. Uh, the, the, the US dollar is rallying very strong, and that doesn't mean good for the global economy all the time. Um, the the Russia-Ukraine conflict is an all-time high. There is choppiness in relationships with China. Now, how does that shape uh, your, your strategy and, more importantly, your gut about Asia? I think, well, there's a lot in that question. <laughs> so let me, let me step back, and, and I, I think I can say this pretty succinctly and briefly. Um, we're coming to the end of an era where we, those of us uh, of age that have had a you know, 20 years career during this period of time, uh, that era is coming to an end. And what I mean by that is if you, if you go back to the late 1980s when China um, was getting involved deeply and aggressively in the global economy. They opened up their economy, okay? And all of this labor hits the world markets, if you will, for labor. India is coming in big. So a couple billion people enter the labor market. Soviet Union goes away, Russia emerges, Eastern Europe is now out from underneath the Soviet Union. All of that labor hits the market. So we had the confluence of forces happening here. And what I mean by that is all of this labor hits the market. It keeps labor rates or labor prices down. Supply chains are reconfigured around the world to take advantage of low-cost labor. Uh, that's number one. If labor is low and labor prices are low, no reason to raise uh, interest rates. So interest rates remain low. If interest rates are low, capital is cheap. So now what do we have? We have cheap labor cheap capital, and it's no surprise that we've had a tremendous amount of economic growth over the last 30, 35 years. Um, but guess what? We're now at a different point in time demographically because in a demographic pyramids are starting to invert and we're having a lot of people retiring relative to the new people coming into the labor force. And so what I'm suggesting uh, will happen just the exact opposite, essentially, of what did happen. You're going to see less labor entering the labor force. And of the labor that's coming in, how much of it is really skilled or ready to go in, right. in terms of picking up these digital uh, and technology skills that we need to keep this economy moving? That's number one. And then number two, um, rates. If you've got less labor coming in, labor rates have to go up. So now we have the inflation situation because if labor rates are going up, uh, then inflation will go up. And what happens when inflation goes up? Of course, we raise interest rates, right? And you're seeing central banks do that. So is the U.S. dollar strong? Sure, uh, because of the inflation and all of the other associated things. And that will probably stay that way, I imagine, for a time. I'm not an economist. <laughs> but you but um, so just sure. <laughs> <laughs> make sure I'm not offering economic <laughs> advice. But that dovetails into your question that basically I said we're in a different era and so the era of cheap capital, low inflation, all of that is over and we're now into a new era and we've got to learn how to compete in that era. But there's something interesting that's happening here and that is this. The world or the world in the last 10 years digitally transformed extensively. We've employed a tremendous amount of technology to drive supply chains, to automate, to do all these interesting things that we talk about you know, rather mundanely these days. Well, guess what? That's not going away. We have to have the skills to keep all that technology going and to evolve it into whatever comes next. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to happen is, is we, we think that that means, especially if there's, if there's a skill shortage, but just because of the demographics I talked about, what I suggest that that means is there's going to be um, automation. Companies, governments, they're going to have to automate in order to take labor out. One, because the labor is no longer available. And so that's, an, that's a great opportunity uh, for us. We have a, quite an automation portfolio, number one. Two, they're going to have to use artificial intelligence right. because you don't want to just have, you know, rote automation that just does the same thing and never uh, is inflexible. So we're going to bake artificial intelligence into the automation so that the automation is a little bit more reflexive and self aware, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and so, who, who's producing the, port, the software portfolios? Who's producing the technology? Who has the capabilities? Who has the vision to say, these are the things that we see happening in the macro environment. This is how it's going to affect business. And therefore, we need to start thinking about automation, AI, hybrid cloud, uh, which is huge, which dovetails nicely with all of that. All of that's going to happen. And so we think from an IBM perspective that we're well positioned uh, to bring the technology and the consultancy uh, to bear to help clients 
whether they be government or private enterprise, uh, deal with all of that. And so that's what's happening in Asia, but it's not just happening in Asia, it's happening worldwide. Probably, yeah. But it's happening a little bit different in mm. each region. The U.S. True. is quite mature and sophisticated True. in this market. Europe is, is having some geopolitical tensions at the moment, let's just say it that way. And then there's Asia Pacific, where um, less geopolitical tension, but at the same time, um, the markets are not around the region are not necessarily as well developed as perhaps either Europe or the US. It's very patchy in terms of developing, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's, it's patchy. So there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in Asia Pacific. And it's for that reason that I say um, um, pretty much everywhere I go that, I, I, you know, you've heard other people say, um, you know, books written on this. This is the Asian decade. Yeah, I believe the, that. Yeah, the decade of, of the region. Yeah, maybe, this, yeah. This, this, is the, this is the decade mm. for Asia Pacific. Mm. I believe that. I believe that Asia Pacific will grow. And more importantly, for the reasons I just described, whatever, whatever Asia Pacific is growing at, the technology market is going to grow a little bit faster. That's true, that. Because of all the technology that needs to be deployed, maintained, evolved. Mm -hmm.